What is up everyone, Dan the Card Man back again. Today we're talking through triple P loans within the trading card industry. These are loans that were funded by the US government, by governments around the world, to make sure that businesses could still pay their employees during the peak of the pandemic, despite not being able to actually produce any goods. Some of you might off the bat say, you know what, trading card businesses, they boomed, why do they need the money? That's part of the thing we're gonna talk through today. I'm also gonna highlight firsthand experience because I work in external audit, as I've mentioned before. I work for one of the global big four audit firms as not me being wanky, that's just how they're referred to in the market, as I often say in these videos. So I sort of saw stuff firsthand. I've got colleagues at banks around the world. I've got colleagues in the US firm. I've got colleagues at US banks, or not colleagues, sorry, former colleagues, that sort of told me how things went um, from their firsthand experience. So I sort of know what went on from a risk appetite perspective. So I can maybe give you some insight on that as well. Now, South Park Cards did a bunch of posts on his story earlier today where he talked through ProPublica. He can come in, search through, you know, sports card industry, search through specific businesses, and it will give you some insight as to which businesses took out these loans because it is all public information. Now, the first one on the list is Golden Auctions. They took out 174 grand in April of 2020. It was forgiven in 2021. Now, there's two things I want you to sort of keep in mind when you're looking through these screenshots. Number one, the date approval date, or the approval date, I should say, not the date approval date, um, being in 2020, that's obviously peak pandemic, peak lockdown, peak restrictions. That's peak a period where businesses probably had employees sitting on the sidelines not doing any work, which means they're not bringing in any income, they're not facilitating orders, so on and so forth, which is why you know they probably need to be paid because they're not generating any income. But also the loan status date, like this sort of says forgiven. Now, forgiven means the loan was you know forgiven in the sense that you do not need to repay it. But this doesn't distinguish, in my, from what I've seen at least, um, between partially forgiven loans and totally forgiven loans. So some of these loans could have been partially forgiven, but it doesn't make the distinction, at least from what I've seen, having done a bit of research myself. So take with that what you will. Let's just assume they are 100% forgiven in this instance. Now, you've got golden auctions, like I said there. PWCC getting 400 grand forgiven in 2021, taken out in April 2020. Leaf, $224,000 approved in April forgiven in November of the same year, which is a bit strange in my opinion. That's got such a short turnaround. We've got one of Jeff Wilson's companies here. I won't talk to that because it's not trading card related. Some of you might see that two amounts, they're quite large, but keep in mind, this is a very large business. And this salaries or this protection program was meant to protect the salaries or fund the salaries of literally every employee in your business that was impacted by COVID and being unable to do any work or unable to go to work. So just keep that front of mind. I won't talk about it because it's not trading card related. Some of you might say, was that funding used elsewhere? You know, it could have been, but that would be fraud, right? And I very much doubt that a man that wealthy is going to commit that level of fraud when it's so easily going to be inspected by not only the IRS, but various auditors and, and businesses and bodies around the country as well. Lathan Sports Cards took out 75 grand, which is an interesting one because I'm not sure why a breaker probably needed income protection in this specific instance. Firehand Cards also took out $112,000, Sports Card Radio's favorite breaker. These ones are strange because like I said, did they need income protection when they can do sort of everything from home? Their product can get sent to them at home. Yes, impacted in the sense that maybe goods weren't coming to them as frequently, which means they weren't generating as much income, which means they still had employees to pay that weren't breaking boxes, which makes sense. But at the same time, it's a bit strange from a work from home business. Obviously some of these work from stores, but those, those points I just gave, like I still think it's strange, but those points that I just gave probably justify why they needed income protection, right? Because goods couldn't come, weren't breaking as much goods. Um, initially, they weren't being able to maybe mail things as frequently as they probably could. They weren't able to get access to as much product as they probably could in the past. But judging by what we know happened later on within the hobby, that's certainly not the case. Um, I think there's one more. Yeah, Burbank Sports Cards getting $91,000 in May of 2020, forgiven in 2021. Now, so a storefront sort of makes a lot of sense, right? Because they're getting a lot of foot tra traffic. They've got employees that only work at the storefront. They serve customers. You know, with the peak of the pandemic, with the peak of the lockdown, with the peak restrictions, obviously they couldn't go to work because they've got no customers to serve. So they, they still need to get paid because they're full-time employees. But you guys get the point. But what's interesting about this one is the fact that these loans were handed out, you know, in the first place, because you've got trading card businesses that literally probably turned over hundreds, if not or hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars more than they anticipated during the pandemic had the pandemic not occurred, right? If the pandemic, pandemic didn't occur, they wouldn't have earned a million more dollars than what they did is what I'm trying to say. So the fact that they needed loans in the first place is disappointing to see. Now I can see why, or we'll go back to what I said at the very start, I should say, where I flagged the approval dates, right? In early 2020, obviously these businesses did not know where things would be in six to a month's time. 
So you can understand their panic and their need to want to make sure that their employees could still generate an income to put food on the table, to support their families, to support their mortgages, so on and so forth. So you can sort of understand that perspective. But what's very disappointing, in my opinion, is that, you know, when you look at when all these loans were forgiven, it was pretty much when things were almost BAU from a pandemic perspective, where these businesses were literally turning over a lot of money. Like the decline in sports card sales didn't start to occur, if I remember correctly, until, you know, Q1 to Q4 of 2021. So, you know, January to almost July or June, that's Q6 of 2021. So the fact that most of those loans were forgiven in that period where literally they've probably got the highest rates of turnover in the months prior to that is crazy in my opinion. And I'm a bit disappointed that some of them have opted to forgive these loans. Now, if I remember correctly, PSA had a very large loan that they were trying to get forgiven through this program and it was public backlash that got them to actually pay it back. PSA were trying to get a four or $5 million loan or whatever it was from what I recall, repaid, right? That's utterly, or forgiven I should say, without having to repay it. That's crazy because PSA, yeah, they had a backlog. Yes, they weren't getting paid because they couldn't pump your cards because PSA, you know, needs to get payment once the card's graded and they weren't grading that many cards at the time, but go back to what they were charging for express services and they wanted to try and get a loan repaid when they were turning over how much more money than they would have been in the past. It's like, come on guys. Some of these other businesses, I just find that very strange. And it's like, what were they doing with the income they were generating? Now, again, I don't want to hate on these businesses for taking this money, right? Because I think they probably all had a good intention. They probably do all have good intentions. And I'm not trying to hate on them in that perspective, but what were they using their profits for that they were generating during the boom? Did they not pay it back for this? Did they not, did they take other loans to help support their business through that time? That's what they paid back? Did they line their own pockets? Like, I'm sure there's plenty of businesses within the hobby that you know, took up this money and paid it back. And it's just very disappointing because it's the taxpayer is the one, the average Joe that ends up having to pay some of this back for these businesses, despite them turning over millions of dollars, which in my opinion is very disappointing. Now, again, I think they did the right thing by taking them, taking these out in the first place, because who knows what would happen, right? That was a very scary time in the world in the sense that businesses we were told, you're not allowed to open, you can't operate, you can't have people in your store, you can't have pe this many people in your store, so on and so forth. So from their perspective, they're like, crap, we're going to go bankrupt. We need to make sure that employees still get paid. But the fact you got them forgiven during the peak of the bubble, like, where's, where, what do you do with your money? And I find that very disappointing. And again, I don't want to hate on them because I think they did the right thing initially, but like, that just does not sit right with me. And again, people are free to do what they want. Technically, they didn't have to pay them back if they didn't want to, but you know, it is what it is. Now, in terms of what I want to flag from firsthand experience, you know, like I said, I've seen this stuff firsthand and I know, you know, some of you might say, well, why couldn't they just take this money and use it elsewhere? Well, that would be fraud, okay? Because the banks still had to facilitate these, oh, sorry, I should say, governments requested that banks were the ones that facilitated these loans for these people. So the government funded the money, but they leveraged the banks, you know, risk appetite, their due diligence process, their control environment, their essentially workforce to determine which businesses desperately needed this money and, and, and basically use their risk appetite, use their control environment, use their review process, use their knowledge to determine which ones were the most appropriate to give these loans to. So what does that mean? It means that the people that wanted these loans had to go through these banks and basically go through a really formal process to get these loans in the first place. So they had to outline, you know, what their wage bill was, they had to give financial statements, they had to give business activity statements, they had to give a bunch more information at the state what the loan was for. So the bank would review all this sort of stuff as they would with any other loan application process and say, you know what, we're going to give you the $250,000 you requested. Now, some of you might say, well, why wouldn't the bank just, you know, give them the money if it's backed by the government? Well, the thing is, as we saw here in Australia as well, if the bank sort of just gave money to anyone without doing their due diligence, the US government will say, well, hang on a minute, you've just given this idiot 250 grand that has no employees. What the fuck are you doing? Right? The bank still had to apply some level of knowledge and risk appetite to make sure, one, they're giving money to customers that technically should still be able to repay their loan and had a more than justified reason their business was actually impacted by the pandemic to make sure that they could still get funded by the government if these customers defaulted or were unable to pay their loans. Because if the bank started giving up all this money to, to businesses that didn't need it or went bankrupt in the end, and then the US government says, well, you shouldn't have given it to them, well, then the, one, the bank are the ones holding the bill, right? And the banks never want to do that. So they've got like the best risk appetite of the world. So that's essentially the perspective it went from. And like I also touched on, these businesses had to state what the purpose was for. So if you've got businesses saying it's for their employee bills and then they turn around and say, you know what, fuck you employees, we're gonna use these $250,000 to buy goods and buy inventory to capitalize on this trading card boom, you know, you're gonna get in big trouble for that. Number one, if you think the IRS and the ATOs, like the IRS in the US, ATO here in Australia, or some of these other bodies around the world are not going to investigate those kinds of things, you are an idiot. 
right? I've heard of things happening here in Australia already with small businesses being caught, just from, you know, people that work in other audit departments to me, just to people that work in, you know, the government audit teams and base and some of the things I'm hearing on the streets and it's getting reported in the, you know, Australian Financial Review, it's getting reported in the Wall Street Journal in the US, based on what I'm hearing from my US colleagues, from my colleagues in banks around the world. And I'm hearing about this stuff firsthand. People are being investigated for this sort of stuff. And the idiots that use that fucking money to pay for inventory or buy things for their house or buy a pool for their house, you're going to get caught, right, for the most part. And now some of you will get away with it. But if you think these businesses would take this money and use it for whatever they wanted and not get caught, I think you're a little bit ignorant. Yes, things move slowly. So it does take a while to do these audits, but people are being audited. So just keep that front of mind. So if you're one of these businesses, not one of the ones on the list, because I don't know if they did this or didn't do this, but if you're a business that took this money and used it for a different purpose, Good luck um, when you get investigated is all I'm going to say because you've just committed fraud. And when we're looking at, you know, inflation levels that we are around the world, if you think that governments are not going to be doing whatever they can to try and get back some of this money they handed out for no reason, you are an idiot, right? And yes, things move slowly, but it's going to happen. So I just thought I'd share my thoughts on that today. Like I said, it's a bit disappointing that these businesses, number one, took out these loans or like not took out loans, sorry. It's good they took out the loans. It's disappointing they got them forgiven especially when they went through booms, especially the likes of Golden and PWCC, which we know had turned over a crap ton, especially some of these breakers where we know they've probably turned over a crap ton towards you know, the end of 2020 and early 2021. Yeah, it's just, it's just pretty disappointing. And the one thing I also want to flag based on what I've seen here in Australia as well is that, you know, if you wanted to get your loan forgiven, it was as simple as making a phone call and saying, I can't pay my loan. Like it wasn't that difficult based on some of the things I've heard, which again is very disappointing. And like I said, it was good to see the backlash. I think at least I mentioned that PWCC, or not PWCC, PSA were trying to get a very large PPP loan forgiven and they got pushed back from the hobby. It's good to see that they had to pay it back. But okay, in some of these other businesses, like I can understand the need to pay these salaries for your employees. It's just very disappointing to see them get forgiven at a time when the boom had already occurred. So what was that money used for? Did you not set it aside to pay back this loan in the first place? Did you have no intention to pay back this loan in the first place? And I'm not saying any of these businesses did that, but those are the questions you should be asking. And it's very disappointing that, you know, this sort of stuff has happened the way that it has. And you've got businesses that probably didn't need the money with hindsight, getting money when other businesses out there, other small businesses that legitimately did need the money and their business has now closed and they probably would have still been around had it not been the case because, you know, some holdup at the bank happened. They just couldn't get something happening on their end. So now they're closed yet you've got all these businesses out there, at least I've seen here in Australia as well, get money, use it to buy like fucking pools, like I said, used to build their house or put towards their house, all this sort of stuff happening. Yet there's people out there that desperately needed the money. There's people out there that, you know, lost their house, couldn't afford to feed their families because they lost their job because their business couldn't get their money or their employer couldn't get their money. It's just very disappointing to see. And that's sort of the world we live in today where some people get rewarded, some people don't. It's very unfortunate. That's why you always got to look out, you know, for your for your neighbor and look after them where you can because um and when I say neighbor, I mean friends, colleagues, so on and so forth, because sometimes people are very unlucky and it's just disappointing to see some people out there, you know, lose their house, lose their job, get other people out there game the system and get away with it when they're making, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars more than they would have been if the pandemic didn't occur. Now, again, very disappointing. I'm not sure what happened with any of these businesses, but you know, you think up what you want after the things I've talked through today. You can make up your own mind. I'd love to hear some feedback from some of these guys because like I said, it could be more than justified why they need to get them forgiven. But again, it's just very disappointing. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.